Welcome, you 10,000 lovers of common sense and the 69% of you who haven't subscribed yet to the final episode of the 2023 annual meeting. Today, Mark Sanderson will be sharing with us the new Jehovah's Witness indoctrination manual, and he will try to convince us that the massive changes introduced by his buddies do not mean the end of the religion. <laughs> sure, Mark, whatever you say. You know we're still doing the cringe challenge, guys, so if you cringe, you lose. And when you cringe, let me know the exact moment you lost it. Are you ready? Let's go. Well, brothers and sisters, hasn't this been an amazing program? <laughs> if by amazing you mean a monumentally stupid program where you dismantled some of your core doctrines and eliminated one of your most effective methods of control, showing the entire world that your religion is not only a fraud, but that you're also incompetent cult leaders, then yes, Mark, amazing stuff. This is truly a historic day in the history of Jehovah's Witnesses. For all the wrong reasons. And maybe our hearts right now are more full of love and appreciation for our wonderful God, Jehovah, than ever before. We've deepened our understanding of Jehovah's mercy, his compassion, and his patience. And what about that announcement about our field service reporting. Jehovah is dignifying us. He has confidence in us. So if Jehovah is dignifying publishers by not requiring them to record their hours, does that mean he's not dignifying pioneers since they're still required to track their time? Do you see what happens when you hold on to such blatant double standards, Mark? You see, why do we go from house to house? Why do we do cart work? Why do we make telephone calls and write letters and make return visits and start Bible studies? Why do we do all of these things? It's because we truly love our amazing and wonderful God, Jehovah. And because you have conditioned your followers to believe that if they don't share in the ministry, their wonderful Father Jehovah is going to destroy them at Armageddon. So, I mean, sure, JWs will tell you that they preach out of love for Jehovah and their neighbors, but they also want to save their own skin in the process. So, can we really call it an act of love or more an act of self-preservation? Well, unselfish love is so powerful. It touches the hearts of those who are rightly disposed for everlasting life. And Jesus said, that his true disciples would be identified, they'd be recognized by the love that they had in their midst. Well, isn't it true that so often brothers and sisters say that what it was that drew them to the truth was the love they felt from their Bible teacher or from the congregation when they began to attend meetings. Yep, that's what we call love bombing. It's when a newcomer starts receiving the attention of the whole congregation. They're love bombed. And when such individual feels lonely or has experienced a recent tragedy, that sense of immediate community into a high control group can hook them into the group. It's cult manipulation 101. My own father had the same experience because he tells me that when he visited the Kingdom Hall as a young adult, uh, he doesn't remember the ex what they were studying about in the watchtower, but he clearly remembers the treatment uh, and the kindness he was received with at the kingdom hall. It made a lasting impression on him. So, no, Dad, you were just love bombed. <laughs> well, maybe we've memorized presentations, and sometimes we felt like we're giving a talk when we're at the door. But what if the person has a very specific interest? What if they have some special need or they're facing some terrible challenge just at the time when we're calling. Ooh, what if we convert people when they're going through rough times and are emotionally vulnerable? <laughs> well, we want to look to the example of our Lord Jesus Christ. He set the perfect example for us. He showed love for people by choosing subjects that were appropriate for each individual. And his personal interest in individuals attracted people to the message. Or come to think about it, maybe it was the fact that this dude could literally heal the sick and raise the dead. Who wouldn't want to be close to someone like that, Mark? 
Now, Mark Sanderson briefly goes over a few separate stories from the Gospels that show Jesus being a skilled teacher. You know, the time he talks to Nicodemus and the time he asks a Samaritan woman to give him a drink. What these ancient narratives have to do with modern Jehovah's Witnesses beats me. It seems to me like you're an expert, Mark. So now, what do we learn from these two simple accounts? Well, Jesus did not use a memorized presentation. He just talked with people and he shared with them the truths that he knew would touch their hearts. He was very quick to choose topics and words based on the interests and the concerns of the person that he was speaking to. Well, now, with all of this in mind, you may be wondering, well, you're supposed to be wondering, but... Thank you, Handsome, for telling me exactly how I should feel. How can I display that same love for the people that I meet? See, wouldn't it be wonderful to have a little bit more help to see how we can show love for people and make disciples? See, wouldn't it be wonderful to have a publication that would help us to be more flexible and more responsive to the different needs and interests of the people that we meet? You already have it, you donut. It's called the Bible. Shouldn't this book, the inerrant, infallible Word of God, be enough for you? I guess the early apostles were really bad at the ministry because they didn't have Watchtower booklets. And what if that publication highlighted specific ways that Jesus and other first century evangelizers showed their love as they made disciples? Well you will be happy to know that Jehovah's Organization has produced just such a publication. It's a 32-page brochure entitled, Love People, Make Disciples. Oh boy, take a look at this atrocity. There's something just so eerie about this cover. Uh, look at this diverse group of people, although none of them have beards. The closest we have to a beard is this evil goatee, but this man must be worldly. <laughs> but now, would you like to see a little preview of what this brochure contains? Please watch the following video. Please kill me. This new publication, Love People, Make Disciples, is being made available in both print and digital formats in over 400 languages. How is the brochure designed to help us show love for people we meet? Unlike the tools we've used in the past, this new brochure does not give us expressions to memorize, nor does it put the emphasis on leaving literature. Rather, it features 12 lessons that focus on qualities we need to cultivate to make disciples. Is naturalness even a word? How can you force yourself to sound natural? Let's see what the cold manual has to say. If we allow a conversation to develop naturally, it is more likely that the other person will feel at ease and be open to discussing our message. Okay, so tell me this. How can a conversation flow naturally if you have an ulterior motive to preach, isn't that just manipulation? I also love how each of these lessons has a short video to go along with it, because apparently if it wasn't for the videos, we would have no way to grasp this complex message. Just take a look at this short one, it's just hilarious. Like a sheep, he was brought to the slaughter and like a lamb that is silent before its shearer, so he does not open his mouth. Excuse me, do you actually know what you're reading? Really, how could I ever do so unless someone guided me? So he urged Philip to get on and sit down with him. I beg you, about whom does the prophet say this? About himself or about some other man? That's an easy passage. Philip began to speak, and starting with this scripture, he declared to him the good news about Jesus. So silly. 
Why couldn't they just film the Ethiopian eunuch being evangelized while his chariot was parked? <laughs> it would have saved us the awkwardness of Philip running up beside it. They went out of their way to make this conversation as unnatural as possible. How are JWs even supposed to follow his example? Should they just start running alongside vehicles when they spot someone reading a Bible or having a crucifix in their car? You just can't make this up. And the other lessons are not much better either. You have lessons on humility, empathy, and kindness. And as if these weren't qualities that take a lifetime to develop. Nope, it seems all we had to do all this time was read a little manual and that will make you a better person, it seems. The lessons will help us see how we can imitate the qualities they demonstrated as we make disciples. Each lesson contains a video that brings the account to life. A woman of Samaria came to draw water. Give me a drink. Now take a look at this other gem from lesson 4 on humility. Our message is more appealing when we present it humbly and respectfully. Watchtower, it doesn't matter how you sugarcoat your message. Your message is supremacist in nature because you're claiming you're the only ones with the correct religion and that anyone who refuses to join your movement will eventually be destroyed. Claiming to have all the answers is the complete opposite of humility. And this book has a lot more examples of these ironic gems that just show you the manipulative nature of this religion. But sadly, I can't go through every one of them because it would take a few hours. And I know you want to get back to seeing Sanderson's beautiful face by now. By cultivating an interest in people, we can talk about things that are on their minds. What truths might we share with people once a conversation is started? Appendix A highlights basic Bible truths that we'd love to teach. Make it your goal to learn these basic truths and the scriptures that support them. If you do, you will be more effective in starting conversations and in making disciples. These truths are so elementary, it just validates my theory that this book is designed for babies. God has a name, God communicates with us, God is fair and unbiased, God wants to help us, that's it. Nothing more to say about the most awe-inspiring being in the universe. This religion is going backwards. For example, a conversation can be started by asking a simple question such as, Have you heard that God will soon end all suffering? Or, Did you know that the Earth's environment will be restored? Sharing a simple truth at the right time is powerful. Jesus said his sheep would listen to his voice. In other words, rightly disposed ones will recognize the truth when they hear it expressed simply. Appendix B helps us to determine whether to continue a conversation. Appendix C provides practical suggestions on how to conduct Bible studies and enjoy life forever. Yep, this manipulation manual will teach you how to manipulate people using this other longer manual, just as Jesus would have wanted. What if you don't feel comfortable starting conversations? Better said, what if you don't feel comfortable starting conversations with the ulterior motive of converting people? There, I fixed it for you. Don't worry. Beginning in January 2024, the Apply Yourself portion of each midweek meeting will help us to practice the points we are learning in this new brochure. The meeting will no longer focus on presenting a predetermined topic in Scripture. Rather, students will select topics for their assignments that they know are on the minds of those in their community. By means of realistic demonstrations, audience discussions, and talks, our meetings will assist us to develop skills that will help us start conversations naturally and adapt to each person's concerns and needs. So now JWs can choose the topic of their sample talk? Hmm, I wonder if they're going to choose topics which are actually brought up in the ministry nowadays, such as concerns over chunning, 
or child abuse or are they just going to remain in their little bubble and keep talking about paradise and the condition of the dead in God's name and all that. <laughs> no matter where we live or under what circumstances we are preaching, simply showing love will help us to find joy in our ministry. More than any specific technique, actively expressing our love for others will help us make disciples. Let me tell you a better way to show love to your neighbor, my dude. Go volunteer for a charity, give to the poor, or at the very, very least, give people the kindness of not trying to change their religion. Because trying to convert someone is the biggest show of intolerance you can have. And how is this brochure any different than the hoopla that has come before it? Watchtower has published countless ministry manuals trying to improve the disciple making work, but the numbers just keep falling. Hey, Mark Sanderson, come here, let me tell you something. Come on, come on, market boy, come on. Maybe more people would be interested in joining your religion if you actually fixed the grave issues that are plaguing it. Just food for thought. We indeed thank Jehovah for this wonderful new tool to make us more effective in our ministry. It's really amazing to witness, as Jehovah's people, the fulfillment of Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 17. It says, instead of the copper, I will bring in gold. Well, what's the point of the prophecy? You see, it outlines that good materials would gradually be replaced by even better ones. And that's exactly what we have seen. And this is supposed to be the gold that is replacing the copper? Your publications become more and more simplified as the years go by. We are reverting. The previous indoctrination manuals used to be much more robust, even if they were also complete nonsense. <laughs> because remember that reasoning book, the little brown book we were supposed to carry with us in the ministry all the time. I remember I carried it and it was useful. What happened to that? W was that just too complicated for the sheep? I mean, at this rate, in a couple of years, I wouldn't be surprised if an older Mark Sanderson released a coloring book designed to help you become a better teacher. What a joke. Every, with each of these organizational adjustments, we went from something good to something better. And I think with the things that were announced today, isn't it true that we're seeing that again? We're going from something that was good to something even better. And I think we'd agree too that Jehovah is helping us to mature as a people. He has confidence in us that our concern is not merely the number of hours or the publications that we place that we're going to put on a report. We love Jehovah we love people, and we want to make disciples. And so, what does all of this mean? It means you have no fucking clue what you're doing. And what does it not mean? Well, first, these adjustments do not, they do not mean that we are in any way slacking off in our ministry. It does not mean that we are slowing down as we approach the Great Tribulation, nothing could be further from the truth. I agree with you, my poor sign friend. It does not mean Watchtower is slacking off. It means the rank and file have already slacked off. For three years now. And your cult has no option but to stop counting hours in order to hide the decline. I have simply not found another good reason why you would destroy a hundred year old tradition and stop counting the numbers. Right now, we have more than 50,000 applications from students who want to attend the School for Kingdom Evangelizers. We're appointing new missionaries, new special pioneers and temporary special pioneers, and an army of new regular pioneers. And in some lands like the Philippines, sorry, I have to mention the Philippines, um, <laughs> We're experiencing record growth. Can you imagine a 9% increase this year with a new peak of 253,876 publishers and 12,954 baptized 
just in this last year. Isn't that amazing? This man is not only a professional donut picker, he's great at cherry picking as well. The Philippines? Are you kidding me? We're talking about the island nation that is mostly Catholic, deeply impoverished, and has a long history with religious cults. And please, I mean no disrespect by saying this because if you are a Pinoy from the Philippines watching this, I love you. I think your country looks amazing and gorgeous. But let's be real for a second. The Philippines is just the perfect nation for cults like Jehovah's Witnesses to proliferate, just like Mexico and Angola. If you want to impress us, Mark, say there's been an increase in Europe, in Japan, in the United States, countries where you are in serious trouble right now. The Philippines, get the hell out of here, man. You probably spend more time at Jollibee's than in the ministry when you're in the country. Please know, please know that in no way is the work slowing down. Our ministry has never been more important than it is now. If you actually believe that your ministry is more important than ever, you would not have gotten rid of your hour requirement. Now at this point, you're just lying through your teeth. So what then do these adjustments mean? Well, they do mean that our motivation for carrying out the ministry has been even more clarified. You see, we share in the ministry because we love Jehovah and because we love people. Was that not the motivation before? So this is the time when we want to be busy in Jehovah's work. Do you remember Jesus' parable of the master and the three slaves? It's just so fitting that Mark ends his talk by reminding his sheep to keep running on the hamster wheel and comparing them to slaves. And guess what he's about to mention? Yep, the Great Tribulation. What an exciting time this is. The governing body sincerely hopes that many more will come to join us in serving Jehovah before the end comes. And remember, Jehovah delights in rewarding his people for their faithfulness and for their generosity. So with the great tribulation fast approaching, have no doubt that Jehovah will soon richly reward you as we all give generously of our time and our effort to love our amazing God, Jehovah, and to make... I just can't do it. I can't take this shit no more, man. Get off the stage, you lunatic. What a way to end the disastrous meeting. The worst one yet, hands down. I mean, let's just recap on everything we went through on this annual meeting. Prophet Jeff tells us that the governing body will never apologize and that, hey, surprise, surprise, the governing body takes decisions without an ounce of Holy Spirit involved. Then Daddy Splain, one of the most dogmatic persons on the planet, tells us not to be dogmatic and then he admitted that Watchtower was wrong in the past. And then we got these four bozos just dismantling some of the core doctrines of the religion in front of our eyes for the whole world to see. So thank you, governing body. Thank you for being such incompetent cult leaders and for showing all your followers who you truly are. From the world headquarters of Jehovah's Witnesses, this is JW Broadcasting. So guys, let me know what you thought of this talk in the comments below and let me know the moment you lost the cringe challenge. Making these videos takes a lot of my time and energy. So if you would like to support my activism, please join me on Patreon. It's only $1 a month and you get early access to all my videos. This work would not be possible without the monetary support of my Patreons and my YouTube channel members. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much. And special thanks to my Tony Morris rank members on Patreon, Michael D, Bonnie D, Jay Miller, Christian P, Jason C, Juan R, Robert C, Stargazer K, and J.I.O. You guys are the best. Take it easy guys, have a wonderful day, and stay away from the tower. Bah. Goodbye, little sheep.